Hi guys, uh, my name is Mario. Some of you may know me as Elements from Video Hive, and this is a tutorial for CG Touch Plus. Now, in this tutorial, I'll be explaining displacements in Cinema 4D, and in this case, we'll be doing only still images, only concepting, and exploring the idea. And in the end, maybe we can get full animation from it. Now, this is the final result. We have four scenes and four examples. So let's get started with example number one. Okay, so usually what I like to do first is adjust my render settings. So we can go to render tab and go to edit. Now we have this output panel and from there we can choose film and video presets and let's go to let's say uh, HDV, HDTV 720. Let's choose this one. So also like to save my file as an alpha channel and this time I want to use PNG sequence and let's save the file to I want to have a new folder I'll call it sequence 1 and simply save it as sequence 1 I'm not sure if this tutorial will actually be about uh, animation it will be only still frame but I think it's more of a habit thing calling them sequences it's for me personally it's easier to track so what I did uh, and you've seen a preview image what I did first is I added a simple sphere to the scene and what I also did is I applied explosion effect to it explosion effect is really cool one and it gives you a lot of possibil possibilities so if you play around with it you can you can find it's really it's really useful now I use it uh, simply because I want to randomize the polygons from uh, the sphere and for example if I add a hypernerb object and put the sphere as a child of hypernerb object I will have uh, some really cool thing going on so if I go to explosion effects and let's go to let's say cluster I want to increase the thickness to something more like 20 so this will get even a bit more interesting so I also want to do is go back to gravity and simply put this to zero now if I also go to explosion and play around with the strength you can also get some interesting results but in this case I want to have uh, I want to maintain the main sphere uh, so let's put this to minimum and I want to put strength just to to number one. Okay, so the next thing I did is we can add go and add another sphere, and we can call actually this one a liquid since we're trying to aim for that look. And let's call this one glow. Now, this second one I want to make it a little bit smaller, something like this. So this will be our glow. And if we make this some kind of transparent material, it will have some cool thing uh, going on. So let's try it. Um, if you have Grayscale Gorilla Kit, you can go and add our hat style box to the scene. And also what I like to do is I like to add an area light. I like to use it as a background or bottom light simply to, to get more atmosphere, to get more dramatic look. So if I do a test render uh, without the lightning, without uh, the second area light, I think it's it could enrich a scene just a little bit. So even if I add some color to it, so something like this, it will look just that as better. So let's try and do maybe something like this. Okay, so we need a new material, so we go to create new material and this can be our glow so in this case I only need luminance channel so uh, we can also go to texture and add gradient inside I want to use our, let's say circular and I want to use something like blue blue color so let's try and add this as well and in the middle I want to add some something like this but again let's try and make this even deeper like this uh, 
so we have a nice contrast. So let's call this one glow and simply apply it to our glow sphere. So if I do another test render, this is what we what we get. Now let's create another material and this will be our liquid liquid type material actually. So we'll try to fake it. Uh, let's go to transparency and check that out. Also reflection and let's go back to transparency and I do not want to have 100 maybe let's say 80% uh, refraction. Let's put it to 1.3. I think glass is 1.2 but let's put it to 1.3. I know I played around with it a bit and I found that this number works just fine. So look, look let's uh, put absorption distance to 50. It's all about experimenting and trying out what works for you, what's not and simply trying to be as much as creative as, as possible. So it's all about playing around with, with the settings and let's turn this color to full black and let's turn it down like five. And also as for specular I want to have really really high specularity so let's go and adjust the height and let's set the width I, I would say to maybe 25 for now. So let's check. Now let's go to liquid and apply this material. Now maybe one thing I forgot to do is we can go back to render settings and I want to adjust my anti-aliasing from geometry to best but in this case I want to use uh, 2x2 1 by 1 2 by 2 simply uh, I'm doing the story on a laptop and the reason is I want to I want to have uh, as fast a render as possible but maintain some sort of a quality and, and so we can try and make another test render okay so far looking cool but one more thing we can do is we can go to liquid and we can go to sphere and let's go to deformers and let's add twist to it so we can add twist as a child of the sphere and simply playing around with the angle so if we can later on for example choose rotation and maybe rotate it it will look like the the liquid or this transparent stuff is flowing around but for now let's let's keep it as it is this is only okay it's zero this is only a idea and we want to see what can we do from this idea if it's um, maybe good enough to do the whole animation so it's actually quite a, a sample of a concept I would say so let's let's do another render but first we can go and we can add a new camera let's turn on and I want to focus it like like this and we can even add protection tab so you can right click on it go to cinema 4d tags and simply add protection tab so it's locked we cannot do any changes to it and if you wish to remove the lines simply go to explosion effect and simply hit the first one oops trying to hit the first one and let's do a test render okay so far so cool uh, so let's try and save this we can export this to image viewer and save it for later when we go into after effects and trying to add background and see what we can do from from this so let's go to example number two and see what more can we do here okay so let's see what we can do in the second example for now I'm going to save my file as tutorial scene number two now let's go to a render tab and again choose a different render path so I will make a new folder and this will be my sequence number two but I wanted to save it right here so new folder 
sequence number two and we can call it again sequence number two okay so what I did is I added another sphere and actually we can go and group these two together so while holding alt and g you can simply make a new null object and we can call it uh, let's say first first example okay so let's make this sphere just a little bit just a little bit bigger okay what we can do is go and create new material and this will be our displacement and we can activate displacement channel as well so as for the color I want to have again something darker and as for the reflection let's again put it more or less same settings so let's choose a for now and again put it to 50 we're choosing for now just to get this more natural look so so you see what happens when when we just add it it, it gives that a little bit of organic and natural glow so let's go to a uh, specular and adjust the height and let's put it something like this and we can for now apply it to a sphere and we can call it again displacement now for this purpose we need to make this object into polygonal object so let's simply make it editable and if we go back into our displacement uh, displacement material and we choose our texture let's choose noise and if we do the preview render, nothing will happen. So what we need to do is we need to check this sub polygon displacement box. So now if we do our test render, now we have some things going on. But I think that what I did is I played with only with height and only with global scale. Now I played with a lot of these settings to find uh, the look I'm uh, I'm trying to get something interesting but for now I I only need to play with global scale and height so let's adjust the height to something like 70 and let's go to global scale and scale uh, this noise to something like 200 so if we now do a test render this is the result what we're having but let's go and adjust the scale a little bit so something like this and if we go back and maybe put 80 as height I'm trying to get as close as, as possible to preview image but let's say this will work just fine for now okay so another thing I did for now we do not see anything uh, from our first example neither glow neither uh, this transparent glowy uh, transparent liquidy uh, material so let's go and choose our move tool and what I did okay now now this is my camera is facing uh, its wrong direction but okay for now this is only a preview I would say a concept so it's not that uh, crucial but let's try and pull this out and pull this aside so what we can do is simply scale it down a bit and in this case I want to increase glow radius something maybe like this so now if we do a test render now we'll have something interesting going on even this uh, bottom light is giving us some sort of uh, lightning coming from this glow sphere so we can maybe put it smaller like so and maybe even more smaller to maybe something something like this it's really fast the result is really fast and it's really uh, cool looking so uh, I want to save this let's go and save it and I also can do a picture view render
So uh, once once in After Effects, we can play around. With, now we have two examples, and we can play around uh, adding uh, different backgrounds to see if this has a future as an idea and will, can this be animated. Now while animating, also you can go back to displacement and use the noise. And when you go to animation speed, if you hit something like a low value, like a 0 0.5, and let's make this huge, and simply let's preview, this is what will happen if you make the full 90 frame or 120 frame uh, render. So this is kind of movement you will have. But for now, I only want to have still image. So uh, let, we can now go to third example and see what else can we do uh, to make this maybe even more interesting. So let's head on, on to third example. Okay, so one more time we can uh, simply continue from the same place we left off. But actually I want to go and I want to open tutorial scene number one and start from there. Since we can go and create a new sphere, but before that, we go to edit render settings and again choose our new folder. And I want to call it sequence three, and I will again call it sequence number three. And I want to save this file as tutorial scene number number three. Okay, so the same procedure, this will be our, uh, let's say, displacement. And also this time we need to make this object uh, editable, so we can use this polygons. So, uh, the thing I did is we can go to MoGraph and choose Random Refactor. Now, if you put a Random Refactor as a child of uh, our sphere, and for example, if we go to let's say deformer and put point and go to let's say noise, you will have some sort of animation. But in this case, I want to leave it as random. Simply because if I add hypernerve and again put it inside, I will have again a sort of organic looking thing. Now even if we go to random and let's scale this down and maybe increase the sphere. It's all about playing the settings and finding something that's that, that's working for you. So again we can go maybe put to polygon and see what's going on there. So let's go to random and again to effector and see how this looks. Okay. For now, let's turn it off. And what I want to do is I want to uh, again see what's inside and reveal this glow and reveal this glassy, liquidy looking material. So the way to do this is we can select our displacement and select our live selection tool. And also let's use our polygon mode. So we can now use any of these polygons and simply delete it, but I want to make this only select visible elements unchecked. So this make uh, this allows me to simply delete anything that's uh, going around the sphere. Uh, if I have this checked then I delete only things that I can see. So for now I want to have this turned off. And let's go, actually I want to have it turned on. And let's go and delete some of those like this for now. And we can turn displacement as random on. So again, if we do a render, okay, so I guess I'll be deleting those as well. And let's turn it back on. Now the thing is, we can go to parameter and simply play with the settings a bit. Maybe turn it off. And also if I'm not satisfied, we can play around with this random seed 
maybe something like, let's say, this. This I think will do just fine. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to increase the radius of my globe. So again, if I do a test render, this is something that I'm trying to trying to have. So it's all about those those little tweaks and making it look make it look cool for you. So okay, so now we can go and add new material, and this will be our again our displacement. 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 And in this case, we also need, I would say, dark color. And do I need reflection, reflection for now? But let's not use it. And we can go to specular, and again, we can play around with, with uh, height. But for now, let's also put it to. Okay, so let uh, colors we can use our, and let's go to uh, reflection, and we can put something really, really uh, minimum value. Let's let's say something like this. Again, we can go to specular, and we can make it something like this. I would say so. Uh, turning on displacement and we can go to our texture and again we can choose our noise now in this case again we can turn stop poly uh, displacement on so let's just see what we have so far okay now what's going in you have so much presets to choose from so if you go to noise channel you have really really so much presets uh, and you can play around with them and see what works for you but for example if we choose this first one we have this kind of uh, terrain looking material which is really cool and simple and it's drag and drop actually you do not have to play around with settings so much but in any case let's go and turn this protection off in any case, if you go, want to use this is in a, a bit more detail, so for example, I want to have a new camera, and let's simply move it in. Uh, let's say like so, and let's make a render. Now, what we can do when it, we have this really, really uh, Okay, let's wait in. Now, what we can do when we have this uh, really, really big frame is go to displacement and make it even bigger in details. We can uh, go to subdivision level and let's make this value to something like 5. Now, we have now much, much more detail to work with and it's really uh, looking better when we're doing a final render. So let's just move back to our scene. And again, I want to remove this camera from the viewport. Now if I do a render, this is what I have. And the result is really, uh, for me, just fine for now. And I can save it again. So let's go and save it. And let's go to uh, our render just to check. OK, settings are fine. And again, we can make this into a picture viewer and save it for later. Okay. So, uh, we can go and see our final, final example. And once done, we can go to After Effects and see what, what we have. 
Okay, so in this final example, we'll try to do something a bit more different. So what we can do is go to File and choose Merge. And what I did, I included a simple head mesh in, in download so you can, you can use it. Uh, so let's, for now, I want to remove this camera and let's go and zoom in and try to fix it. Okay, let's use something something like this. I'm using the, the first file since I want to use uh, these two spheres and this will be my uh, background glow. So let's go and save the file. And this will be our tutorial scene number four. So simply save it. I want to replace it. And let's go to render settings. And what I want to do is again, go and choose a new folder and this will be my sequence 4 and I want to save again this file as sequence 4 so okay uh, for now let's just move something like this and now we can go and group this two spheres together and while holding alt and G you can create it into a null object and we can call this sphere Actually, we can call this sphere number one. Oops. Sphere number one. Okay, so uh, the thing is, this time I also need only the front view since still I'm in uh, experimenting phase and I want to lo lose as minimum time as possible. So let's go and to sphere one and I want to increase this glow sphere to something maybe like this and I want to scale them down both to fit inside so let's go and try something like this and what we can do is simply copy them and make new copy and pull it down a bit and again we can choose a scale tool and scale it scale it down. So if we do a test render this is what we have so far. Now again we can go to hypernerbs and make this head mesh so we can call this head mesh so it looks just a bit more smoother so uh, what we can do is go and create new material so let's choose our let's say reflection and again we can choose our fresnel something like this and let's choose our color to something like like this now also what we can do even uh, play around with displacement maps uh, what we use in a third example and make the head looking like it's it's made of, of stone or something but for now uh, I just want to experiment with the uh, same type of materials and see uh, if I had an idea and maybe later on I can I can play around just a little bit more when I, I come to animation phase so uh, what we can do now is okay let's make a new duplicate so let's go again to and this will be our head mesh and this will be our let's say again liquid and for now I want to remove this material and let's go and make the second one just slightly prettier and position it like this so for now we have two copies now what I want to do is I want to apply liquid effect so uh, liquid material sorry so so this is what we have um, now what I did is again I had an explosion effect so if we put explosion effect as a child of our first mesh and let's go and go to gravity and lose the gravity uh, we can go to strength and really again put it to minimum I want to say one and instead of all directions I want to have only X so 
this is something that will be happening. So again, under cluster, I want to make thickness something like, let's say three, and minimum polygons and maximum polygons, I'll make one and, yeah, one and nine for now. So if I turn on uh, my hypernerves and I do a test render, I will have something like liquid effect going on. So something like this. And again, we can go back and just play around with explosion effect. See what we have. So if we have a minimum, if I'm if I'm going to do animation, I may be be doing uh, this kind of animation only with uh, strength. So let's see what we have. This will be, for example, our first, and this can be, for example, our final uh, final keyframe. So what we can do is again, it's all about playing with those little settings make it look just the way you feel it's right so let's do another render okay so now what we can do is I want to keyframe this I want to make keyframe on frame 90 for the strength so simply by holding a control uh, simply click on it and you will have you will have this uh, red button so let's go back to frame zero and I want to make it to uh, something like one. And again, I want to make this a keyframe. And this is the animation that I'm getting at. Okay, but even so, if you do not want to have it so smooth in, you can simply click on first keyframe, go to interpolation and from spline simply hit linear and what this will do is it it will not be so ease is in but it will be more is out even if you want to do the same on frame 90 from spline to linear then it will have something like constant constant uh, strength okay so let's let's see uh, another time add trend settings Okay, this looks fine. Output. Let's okay current frame, but we can go and choose another frame. Let's say 90. Okay, let's let's say this is something that it's worth uh, in investigating and exploring a little bit further so again we can add a new camera and for example this can be our close-up also we can use another camera let's make this one invisible and this one and the second one can be some sort of a close-up let's say something like this And like I said, this can be a second camera. Okay, and one final thing is we can maybe put this sphere just a bit lower. Okay, so let's say this will be our close. Close up. Okay, so let's do uh, render, edit, render settings, just final check. Okay, and let's go to picture viewer and save this.
Now our next step would be going to After Effects and play around with uh, what we did so far and see if this is ideal. It's worth exploring a bit further and maybe make full animation of it. So let's go into After Effects. Okay, so here we are in After Effects and I imported my uh, sequences so far. So the way to do it is really simple. You simply need to uh, go to your project panel and simply left click uh, twice and choose your images and simply hit hit open. Or you can go to file, import and file again choosing your images and simply hit open. Also if you have full PNG sequence, not only one image, then you choose PNG sequence and simply hit open and again you will have full image sequence in your timeline. So for now let's go and save the file. I want to save it as my uh, main project. And we can go and let's make a new composition and this will be our scene number one for now. 10 seconds is fine, maybe even 5 seconds is fine. And let's choose uh, let's choose HD V HD TV 720 again by 29 frames per second and simply hit OK. Now let's drag and drop this sequence number one and let's make it in the middle like like so. And also what we can do is we can go to new so and make a new solid and this will be our uh, background uh, actually a yeah, background yeah and let's go to effects and let's also add let's add ramp to it it's I don't, I'm not sure if you see it if you go to generate and choose ramp. We want to choose radial and let's make this let's even make full black and make this something like this. Now also what we can do is we can add a new solid and this will be our noise and what we can do is again go to effects and oops we can go to effects and we can find our noise and add fractal noise now in this case we just want to add a little bit texture to our background so let's go and make it multiply but let's also go and transform and let's see let's scale it scale it up and we can also add some fast blur to it. Something like this just so we have some kind of dynamic dynamic background. Okay and even we can go and select this while holding control and go to layer and pre-compose and call it our background. So okay. So we can use it also on the other one, on the other example. So uh, let's go and make scene number two. Again, you can go to edit, uh, duplicate, or simply you can go to control D and make a new copy. So we have four examples. Actually, I think we'll have uh, five. So we can go to scene number two. And instead of image number one, we will make this sequence number two. And again, what we can do is simply align it like so. And again, go to number three. Also, you can, uh, while well, sequence number one is selected, you can go to sequence number three. And while holding Alt, simply drag and drop, and this will be instantly replaced. So again, we can go to sequence number four, and this time we have. Okay, we can actually call this 4A and 5 can be actually 4B. So 
we can open 4b and in this case we'll be using this one okay so we can go to add a new composition and this will be our main let's call it actually main scene So in case we, we, we do animation, so let's go to composition settings and make it 25. This is what's, oops. If I were to do a test animation, this is what I would like to, to have. So I usually like to adjust my scenes. In a way, I'm doing the real animation just to see the flow and to see in my head if this flow kind of makes uh, kind of makes sense and can can it uh, be a full animation of so for now I can see that my first scene is too bright on on, on some areas so we can go inside and apply let's say go to color correction and let's choose curves and make it just and let's move this to fit the others just a little bit better okay so uh, one final thing is we can go to uh, new okay let's go here a new and adjustment layer and this can be our Our color correction and let's go and use curves so in this case what we can do is we can go to, let's say to blue channel and play around and see what kind of look can we get from it what kind of atmosphere are we aiming for and so if I were to do animation now from it I know what kinds of uh, moves I want to have and this will give me a lot of detail later on and full process so we can again go maybe reset it go to red channel and maybe explore just a little bit so if I want to have this uh, bluish kind of atmosphere this is what I'm gonna use also maybe if I want to use a different color I can go to color correction and hue saturation but in this case let's just put it on top and again play with different colorings and maybe see what what I'm trying to to get so basically this is this is it this this is the process that I went through while making uh, your, the preview image and now if I want to make this animated then I'll be probably going back into uh, Cinema 4D and trying to explore just a little bit further. Also what I did in preview on, on some examples is for example if I go to scene number 2 and I'll go to new and add, I'll add a new camera okay and I'll make this a 3D object and also what I'll do is I'll import this C number one but in this case I want to go let's say color correction and also what we can do is use curves and again make it just slightly darker and also what I want to do is I want to fake uh, depth of field so if I do this I can make it also 3D object just pull it back side like so and maybe oh, I want to make this duplicate put another one right here and maybe pull it back in and also we can make a duplicate of our main one and pull it right 
right here so and again what we can do is just add blur so we have it also we can write something like like this just know what we're dealing with oops and in this case I want to make this like so and this like so and maybe this in full white So now I have maybe a better idea of uh, what I want to make, of what I want to create, and so on and so on. So uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. I hopefully think this uh, was helpful enough to make you started and working on your ideas. And one more time, my name is Mario, and I'm a Video Hive author. Some of you know me as Elements. So uh, thank you for watching and. Hopefully, I'll be making a few of a uh, few new tutorials uh, soon enough. Thanks for watching once again.